I went out with I went out with uh, like Jax and Sheena and them from Vanderpumps. We all oh, did you? Went to, I, like I went to Disneyland and apparently for like the last 10 years, I've been hitting wheat pins incorrectly. And oh. today, that day I happened to hit it correctly. Do you mean upside down? No, I just wasn't inhaling properly or something. I don't know. I've never been this fucking high in my life. Oh. I was at <laughs> Disneyland like, holy, like just with Jax. Yeah, like Jack, it was Jax, his girl. And I'm like good friends with Sheena. I've known her for like. 10 years oh, okay. like randomly you know but, jack's in a bit of trouble right now yeah jack's has been i'm like fuck. i'm not dude. familiar with these people. oh man you gotta watch <laughs> yeah dude is, dude is like he's <laughs> you see his face he's that's dude, real <laughs> if i say you're wild like i'm pretty fucking wild i'll say and do just about it fucking jack's anything. Is, is, and jack's uh, is he's next scumbag. level yeah jack's is, <laughs> Jax is next level. He's the scumbag you <laughs> wish you could be. Dude. I know, I know. No, I have no uh, desire to be anything. Yeah, like yeah, he's like a yeah, his his is different. And then and then it's being sucks. high at Disneyland with Jax <laughs> it was the mo- sounds like my worst nightmare. <laughs> dude, it, it is was my least favorite place on earth. It is Jax. And then throwing marijuana. You get a little paranoid, too many people. It sounds like the worst thing ever. <laughs> Hi, hello there, and welcome to another brand spanking new episode of Another Bachelor Podcast. Hey, my name's Dylan. I'm saddled up next to one real Nicholas Davis. What's going on, everybody? Behind the glass, we have the uh, producer of the podcast, Patrick the Irish Bug Hickey. Good to be here. No show tonight, but a very, very special guest. In studio, we have the man who probably (laughs) did not rape Corinne Olympias. I would say almost certainly did not, Dill. <laughs> Mario Jackson. What's going the, on, D? Man, that is a great introduction right there. <laughs> you know, I like that. Uh, you know, I feel the love already. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're excited to have you. Thank you for coming in. Lots of questions, you know. Big story you were involved in and whatnot. And we're such huge fans of the show. <laughs> um, first question. Could you kind of take us through the events of that evening? <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, actually, that is just like completely kidding. You might as well have done it a thousand times already. (laughs) We've heard it way too often. Where do you get your ideas from? I was honestly, as we were watching this show this summer, I was outraged. Like when I hear you say you love Corinne uh, and and you, I don't know if you forgive her or maybe you're not. You don't forget. Why do you love her? I, I freak out because. I feel like there was one person that could have stopped that train from being like off the tracks that day was when producers walked up to her that morning. I assume some legal people walked up and said, hey, look, we're shutting this down. We need to talk to you. These are the things that are going on. All she needed to say in that second, and that's not to say that there wouldn't have been an investigation was nothing happened. It was consensual. We're all good. But I think in her little dinosaur brain, she was like, didn't know how to take it because at that time, Demario, she was like beloved. She was the fun drunk girl that says the funny little quips when Nick uh, was, what was the slogan? He was in love with her. And I, from my understanding, she had, like, olive. A book lined up. Again? she had a book deal lined up. She was going to have her own reality show. So when I think she got hit with that that morning. She did not know how to respond. And what should have kicked in was like, what's right and what's wrong and say, this is the truth. This is what happened. This is how I feel. Let's move on or do what you guys have to do. Instead, she climbed behind a wall, protected by lawyers, releasing statements saying, I am a victim He's not and happy. waited for things to unfold. No, I was pissed for Demario <laughs> because happy. look, in that climate of that time and what we've been going through, especially since the last six months, Think of this for for one second, and I know I'm talking with you. Not Jesus. more no, 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 for one more second. Than like Jimmy one. Smith at Congress. Imagine <laughs> if there weren't cameras. Imagine four different couples were hooking up that day, and I don't know how many camera crews they have to follow all the different hookups on that island. And we didn't capture what really took place between her and Demario. Wait, we have one crazy <laughs> female producer walking around making allegations. So now we got a producer making an allegation. We have Demario's word, but we've already kind of sullied his name by saying oh, he had a side piece and he was cheating on his girlfriend coming on the show. Bird. And then a we have bird. Corinne <laughs> hiding behind a wall of lawyers, not saying anything except making a statement saying I'm a victim. Yeah. Fuck that. You are 
Demario, I would fucking. So have call, I, I got a lawyer for you. So His name's vascular. Mark Garagos. We will squeeze that Olympia family forever. You don't have a lawyer <laughs> named all, all, Mark Garagos. All the fucking olive oil grease out of that fucking olive family, and we will we will dry them out. You know a lawyer <laughs> named Mark Garagos. You cannot. He hire. threw a charity for him. Uh, we're pretty tight with Mark G. But shout out to Mark G. Shout out to Mark G. Some tells me you are just a sweet guy, and I. I don't, you know, know how, I don't know how I would have handled this. I would have fucking killed her. I'm you, sorry. <laughs> you know, through all of this, you know, like the funny thing that you say that I have the best like parents in the entire fucking universe. Like, like literally like my grandma is 80 years old, was reading me articles of like the whole all this madness and through the whole entire time. I literally was just thinking of like the Michelle Obama quote, like when they go low, like we go high. And it's one of those things that African-American men, the way we're portrayed in the media is it, just like it's like we're like so bad. We're so angry. We're so nigga, 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 bitch, bitch, bitch. So for me, I had the opportunity to be deep like the, the like the face of you know of the media of African-American. And there were times the word TMZ and so they would bait me. Hey, say you hate white people. Say you hate women. <laughs> say you hate because they want this angry black guy, but instead it's me leaving the restaurant with my grandmother and my goddaughter. And then all of a sudden that perception of African Americans for just that one day or that one summer was changed. And I actually had nothing was greater than when I would have an old 70 year old white lady who would walk up to me. Hey, Demario, I just want to say I'm praying for you and your family. I love the way you carried yourself. You could have done this. You could have done that. You could have threw everybody under the bus. You could have just went on this fucking rampage. Like I wanted to deep down inside. I'm like, ah, but I have kids who I mentor and train. I have godchildren who look up to me and I would hate for them 20 years down the line. It's bad enough that I'm going to have to address this you know, as is, but I ought to hate for my godson to be like, hey, you can't tell me to act like this because in summer 2017, you told the whole world to suck your dick and lick your ass, you know? So, well, very specific. <laughs> it brings me to my question. How do I see that tape? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you said there's, you said there's no tape. No, is there, there a tape or is there no tape? There is tape. They, they were filming all day long. We've seen pieces of what she looked like eight yeah. hours later. Let him. Let, there's a tape or what is it? Where's oh, the, the tape, Demario? <laughs> Man, I, you know, I had the shirts made. Show the tapes. You know, uh, like, you know, uh, with the tape and with everything. Dude, I'll, I'll get it like, on those. <laughs> you, know, like, like, you know, like with the, you know, tape and everything. I, I feel like leading up to it, we as like a society, we thought this tape was going to be next level crazy and then you actually watch paradise and you watch everything that led up to that very moment and you're thinking pretty whack this is fucking terrible like this isn't even for me there was a point for me to where i'm you know you have like that moment of clarity and you're like wait a minute was it way more lit than what i thought and then as i'm watching it unfold people are texting me and my twitter everything's blowing up and people are like you've got to be kidding me like this is it see he really wants to see this tape I don't think I, I'm saying it, it can't in be jest. that I was breaking up the seriousness because we're <laughs> yeah. supposed to be a comedy podcast. I it was all very fascinating, you know, from I, Patrick and Demario. I, but I, I, I was trying to make some laughs. I can't imagine uh, that 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 tape would be that interesting. Probably just a profile shot, uh, and you're just diving in between our legs. That's probably what that that tape is. <laughs> um, anyways, <laughs> so you say that for a moment you were trying to present. I mean, you said some heavy stuff. Trying to present a. A good image of an African American man in the media. Just, you know, I don't think that did anything. Yeah, I think you should have just sued her. Or, or <laughs> is there a component of you that likes Corinne? Do you think she's a good person? You just want to let bygones be bygones. You know what? Since all of this, like Corinne has become like one of my best friends. Like, like we talk so every weird. day, which is it, it's it, it's something that I don't think a lot of people can realize like at the end of the day we both were in the middle of this trauma and bonds people we were both tried to put against each other from day one like people didn't even care about what happened people just saw black and white like the, you know that's how we are as a society like i was reading comments and it just nobody cared about that i could have done something or for all i know it could have been you know we could have been hurt in a skiing accident and broke both our legs some sunny bono type shit you know but people didn't care all they had is this white girl and black man so automatically, people were just like, 
go back to Africa. And then black people were like, this is why you shouldn't fuck with white girls. They're the yeah. devil. And so like you had all these people who just were trying to put us against each other. And then when we finally had a chance to sit down and to talk and to, you know, just get to know one another, like, yo, how have you been? The first thing I asked her was, how are you like mentally, physically? Because I know what the fuck I've been through. And I'm going nuts. So I can imagine what you're going through, especially now where people think just because I got off that she's now guilty of something. Hey, Demario, what I'm about to say is not intended to get you to ro roll on her. I, you already have your position in your relationship with her. So nothing I say, in my opinion, is going to change that. Oh, yeah, definitely. But I, 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 and this is the last I'll say of it. When that statement came out, I thought, that put you in a position, I'm talking about the victim statement, the initial first statement that she made where she basically said she was waiting for things to come to light during the investigation. She later came back and said when she said she was a victim, she was talking about the media. I feel like she's lying there and spinning, was spinning that because she realized you'd done nothing wrong and now she had to kind of cover her ass and that's why I hate her as a person. <laughs> but I'm speaking for you. I think what she did was fucked up. Can't, I, I hope, honestly, I'm so happy that she's basically just doing a podcast now because she had the world in her hand at that point and now she's, yeah, she's doing a lonely little podcast yeah. like With we Drake. are. With Drake, she did great. Well, Drake Bell, yeah. I but, think <laughs> you can tell that we're all you. just completely confused about why in God's name you would ever be because he's a good guy Olympus. and he doesn't want to get angry about it's very it. very confusing no no because you know like you know like with her and i you know we had that you know that little bit of chemistry or whatever we had in paradise obviously enough to almost shut down the whole fucking franchise yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> I'll say. yeah you know and then from there you know we just had an opportunity to just speak and you know kind of talk about like you know what she went through and what i went through and it was just more of like the whole like trauma thing i mean it is you know, it, I mean, it was very, I mean, for me to try to be like rah, as rah, 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 and as badass as I am now, I cried every day for three months. Like, I had fucking suicidal thoughts. I wanted to, like, no lie when I say family, friends, and Kanye West, if it wasn't through music, <laughs> Kanye West, Radiohead, Jay-Z, Lauryn Hill, Portishead, if it wasn't for music, I would have fucking jumped off some fucking bridge. I feel or, like Radiohead like, might make you kill yourself. What's Portishead there? Well, like, you know what's funny is that I mean, I work out to like R and B music and very smooth, and it's like and like there's me some too. yeah, and like yeah, you know, me too. <laughs> you know, there's some songs I would play and it just would soothe me. It would make me family business. Yeah, oh, I love family business. Family yeah. business, yeah. shit. Yeah, so yeah. I just feel like that through all of that, you know, it kind of brought us closer in a sense because she was going through the same thing, and obviously her, you know, her stuff was way different, especially when everything came out that I was, you know, in the clear. Then it became, she became like the... Slut shaming. Yeah, you know. I mean, and it sucks for her because, like, you know, I, I mean, we live in, like, a crazy world where you have, like, a lot of people who are upset with, you know, women if they post, like, a bathing suit picture. That, oh, well, that well she deserved that. She posted a picture of her in fucking Bali with her family. So, you know. I mean, those, those people are stupid. It was... That's why I feel like it got so big, the story as it did, because it fit the narrative of what was going on in the news at the time. It was, I, I never forget, Beyonce had had her, her twins, or her babies, and yeah. I, we were still trending over her twins. Like, <laughs> like my connect at TMZ was calling me. That is undeserved. Like, it, it was... Those twins being born is a special occasion. Like, you guys should have gotten It, it was down. legit. It was, I, I, I remember my friend at TMZ, she goes, hey, I don't need to ask you where you're at because I get a call every second of the day, like, where you're at. I'm like, this is fucking yeah, weird. Yeah, that is so, like, so Like, it was strange. the, it was, it, it was strange for me, like, to be at the gym trying to, like, Get swole. Live. And then all of a sudden I'm on this big screen, like, and everybody is talking about you, but everything is fake. Yeah. Like, <laughs> people are like, oh, well, you know, I heard from Demario that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm watching myself and I'm like, I didn't say that. <laughs> like, you know, I'm, you know, it, it, it just was a really weird, especially when Trump talks about the fake news and the fake articles and the yeah. fake things. And then, you know, you get Google update and you read an article and it's like, oh, well, Nick from Minnesota who, writes for bustle said xyz and i'm like what the fuck that's well not then even... other media outlets take that and they use that as a source yeah. and then they basically just xerox it's a vicious it vicious cycle well i i want to say go ahead i'm sorry Dylan. you said i mean we were talking about corinne getting a little bit of heat um and getting slut shamed which is you know it's not good but i mean when when any gender hooks up with too many people in one in one night i mean 
It's a loose definition, but it's just a little, it's a little gross. How many people did she hook up with in that like 12 hour span that she was there? I'm not really sure. You know, I read things and I said, and like, you know, I, you know, you see all of these different articles. I don't know what was true. Yeah. I, I don't know what wasn't true. Uh, I mean, at one point, things just got so far out of hand. Like it said <laughs> that I like, it says that I was hooking up with Alexis and it's yeah. I'm like, that's fucking not true. Yeah. You know, and then it. You know, she's what, our favorite, by the she's way. She's our favorite. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lex is a fucking she's champ. Wonderful. You know, you know that Simpsons uh, gif where he walks into the bar and then yeah. walks right out? That was Corinne and I for Paradise. Like, that was, <laughs> I mean, it would be the equivalent. Out of, yeah. out of bushes. Yeah. Like, legit. Like, I mean, it was, no, the whole Jasmine thing. Like, at, at that point of Corinne and I speaking at the bar, all the girls were still, like, hating on me. Like, Raven had just, like, told me off oh, a little yeah. bit. The and, leader. Like, you know, it was, so it was kind of like, I, it was like that crazy moment. And then Corinne and I start talking. We start making out. And then one thing leads to another. And then that's when all of the, I mean, that's when Paradise started. Okay. The, <laughs> the girls were genuinely upset with you when you got to Paradise. Dude, it was. Over what happened with the the little bird. Correct. That's. Like, it was, like, no do lie. Do you buy that or. Are you guys like playing a little bit of roles I, when you're on the island? I've never felt like my mother's been mad at me like twice ever. And I'm going to say Raven bitching me out was like a close third as far. <laughs> I've never felt more fucking like because because it was genuine. It was the accent, the eyes. And you like, never met her. And I had it was. Well, here's the crazy thing. Raven's I don't psychotic. I, I don't watch the show. Like, this is my first year ever watching the show. Like, oh. I watch people come. So I don't know any of these People, I don't know, like, their brands. Only yeah. person I know is Corinne, because when I watched the first episode, I was like, fuck, she's hot. Like, like you know, okay, cool. Yeah. And I remember walking down there to the beach, and when I'm, you know, I kind of walk up, and I see my guys. I'm like, yo, Dini, yo, what's up, what's up? And then yeah. Raven's like, did you bring your girlfriend? But the way she said it was like, holy fuck, like, she, who, like <laughs> it was kind of like, oh, who's this, part two? Because I really didn't know. And then from there, you just felt her, like, Daggering. And I remember asking Louie, one of the producers, I was like, yo, who is that girl? He's like, oh, that's one of Raven. I mean, that's one of uh, Rachel Lindsay's friends. Yeah. And I was like, dude, like, is she cool? Like, she's a very low brow. I'm <laughs> sure it could just, like, <laughs> you know, she really. And, and I remember after, you know, <laughs> I remember after we spoke and everything was fine, we started taking shots. One thing leads to another. Smoke? You Sp know, spoke. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I thought you guys were blazing it up in the oh, sand. Oh, no, no, I wish. <laughs> but I remember after, like, we, like, you know, spoke and we were able to take shots. And then she's like, you know what? I like you, Demario. Won over quick. What and I just was like. Maniac. And I was just like, cool. Because I remember maniac. telling them all. I was like, look, well, I'm going to come to Paradise. I was like, like, regardless of me falling in love and this and that, I was like, everybody's going to hate me at first because I've heard about it. But then everybody's going to love me. And then. It kind of happened. By that night, we were all like living our best life, all like fucking throwing coconuts and shit at each other. Whist whistling. Out, whistling. Whistling. Was unbelievably dangerous. It, it was. <laughs> <laughs> throwing coconuts at one another? No lie. That, Jesus Christ. D that night one was so lit. Like. By lit, you mean like, like people drinking? I mean, it know? was it was so much fun. Okay. Like it was, even with all the bullshit, the probably like a top five like night of my entire life. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> it was just. It just was all That's the, a heavy handicap all on like a night. the anticipation and everybody just you know we're all there and everybody's just like having fun and is everyone just hooking up and entering one another or <laughs> for the you know that first night did you like just a have, did Iggy get laid no. Iggy, Iggy. <laughs> okay you all know right. like you remember you remember back in the day like Thank like God. sorority fraternity like the yep. formals and like everybody's yep. on the dance floor just like awkwardly dancing bumping and grinding and trying to figure out who you it was that. Okay. It was it was of yo what up bro obviously the bros were broing out but at the same time we fit, like we found out that later on that night that the girls had the roses for the first time so we were all like oh shit it's right. fucking you know it's go time bad strategy yeah. I mean, well you know a common theme in that season after you left was the the boys loving each other way too yeah, much yeah. all the relationships did so <laughs> poorly they too needed yeah. D to mix it up um you probably talked about this a lot uh so forgive me uh bird lady as Dylan refers to her the quote unquote side piece <laughs> um all right so she shows up yeah. and and your reaction was who's this um lies so yeah. <laughs> Lies. That's what caught you, Demario. You know that. I know. So, um, was it just the surprise? Like, oh fuck, what the fuck is she no, doing here? Like, no lie, her side profile. When I walked in originally, it just was her side profile. And if I'm being 100 percent honest, you saw it right away. I, it's I saw a very the unique side, profile. I, I saw the side profile, and I was probably my a first beak. or second time seeing her in like 
real life without leaving the club like fucking inebriated <laughs> and black the fuck out and what just, the hell was she doing showing so, up to the show was she wants camera time more instagram yeah, followers dude like, like you know they said elon told me that a few different girls elon gale book yeah. out now on it, amazon can't remember the title but that would have been dope who not, is elon so gale. elon's like the mastermind behind all of the bachelor franchise Throw out his book. What is it? Oh, uh, fuck. You almost had it. Yeah. You, yeah, let's plug his uh, book. Why? It would have been cool. <laughs> Elon's the best. Anyway, Elon said that they received several calls from women who were like, that Demario Jackson guy that went on, he's an asshole. He <laughs> fucked me and never called me. And like, <laughs> did you? He, he's, yeah, he's an you asshole. Did. Elon was like, he's perfect. So Elon's like, fuck. Elon's like, D, Elon. like, you're, he goes, everybody's buzzing about you. Like, you and Rachel have this connection, but this is fucking too good to pass on this is like tv wait wait like, wait. This they is, told you that she was well, well this is once i got onto paradise yeah. they told me like hey by the way like this girl kept calling in over and over wow. oh. and over and over and God. over and i'm like because they tried to tell me at first that this woman who i'm dating sits in a crowd for seven hours and watches a bass i'm like there's no woman Right. On God's green earth, who's going to be livid about her boyfriend that she just found out that's on a fucking TV show to get married, is going to sit in a crowd for seven hours. It's so crazy. Watch but him play basketball and then be like, afterward, the whole fucking court's cleared, everybody's gone, and then she comes down the stairs like, hey, can we talk? Right. I was like, come on, bro. Like, yeah. You that can't. being said, you, you hit it again after the show, right? Yeah. Oh, good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you yeah. gross? Yeah. You have to. You did. You did. Again oh, no, after no, no. the oh, show? Oh, 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 her? oh, no, 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 no. Jesus. Not her, not her, not her. That played off super funny, though. I know, that was, I that completely, I, I was reading your lips and I'm hearing you, but I was, oh, hell no. <laughs> dude, his, his body language is very Dude, confusing. after this show, like, no lie, I was just talking to Diggy earlier. This show is a cheat code. What do you like, mean? Like, just the, the, the quality of women... <laughs> Who, especially for me, I went through a fucking sex scandal. The 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 I've, I've I'm at the bar hanging out, and I'll have a like a for sure ten walk right oh, up to me that, and oh, just be okay. like, "Hey, I want to sit on your face like Corinne tonight." Woo! And you're just like, <laughs> "Holy shit!" That happens to me too. Yeah. I don't know how to handle yeah. it. <laughs> like legit. I, I mean, there's times where it's overwhelming because you're just like. Fuck, that was extremely blunt. The yeah. fuck are you on Bumble like, for then? You know, because like I need more cheat codes. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I need like I need like the Barry Bonds O one life, you know. Tamario, when are you gonna yeah. settle down? <laughs> You know what? I'm kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. I would give a million dollars to be his penis for a week. All, all BS aside, I, I do want something, right? Like, you know, I, I, I mean, I would love to to settle down and have little Derek Jeter Jackson running around, my little, you know, a mixed interracial baby of God. With Derek little, Jeter? Little, and, yeah. and little Giancarlo. Exactly. From, little Giancarlo, and, uh, Aaron Judge. Uh, yeah. You know, but like right now, I mean, like what Kanye say? Don't leave how you uh, don't leave when you hot. That's how Mace screwed up. What like, you can't like you can't leave the game right now. Mace yeah. he left for uh, to be a pastor. He left to be a pastor. Who's they, that? Who's Mace? Mace? He a, was in uh, Diddy's crew. Yeah, uh, Mace is an old rapper who was like arguably the hottest rapper in the rap game. Oh my gosh! You when, know who would know about this? Welcome back. Welcome yeah. back. Patrick is welcome an expert back. on black culture. <laughs> oh, uh, he look, said it last week. He's looking up. He's Pat, looking He's looking up. He's fired up. Window. He's fired he's up. He's looking up some Mace lyrics. Pat uh, remembered a Rick Ross song <laughs> from years ago, so he deemed himself an expert of black culture. Hustling. Yeah. I know. I want to talk shit about Dean because Dean is a fucking hypocrite. Let's do that okay. because he loves him. Okay. On the men tell all. Uh -huh. By the way, we're gay. I can't believe we have a show about this. this no, show. I love it. All right, so, um, Deanie baby uh, called you out on the men tell all for the side piece incident. Little did we know this fucking scumbag goes on Paradise and plays lipstick eater Christine. Horrible, horrible to do. And that. totally came off as a misogynist, a womanizer. The whole thing. The whole thing about here's the thing. Like put it this way. Like. Um, Jamie and Dom on Paradise when they had the whole Fred the and, girl with the yeah, piercing right yeah you here. know when they go on multiple dates or like scallop fingers she goes on multiple dates all the girls are like yes sis live your best life girl this is what Paradise is about right. but then when Dean does it the whole fucking world nope, hates him. No, no, no. Can no, I say why, no. Demario? Was he was playing with someone's feelings. He was whispering her in no. her ear one thing mm -hmm. and then doing a completely. And all oh, okay. Wild, I... and, 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 and and Krista's uh, 
horrific Oliver Twist-esque past uh, did not help her at all. Um, uh, she she grew up in Russia, very poor. I feel you, believe those sympathies. Yeah, you know about her her past? No, no, not oh, at all. No. Oh, we'll see. Uh, here, let's tell you a little bit about it. Uh, she was orphaned in Russia. Uh, before that, she... Uh, at like eight, because she... Right. Uh, she was eating lipstick in her house because she was so hungry. Oh, wow. And she was thrown out of her house for, get ready, eating before her mother got home. Oh wow! Is this like a true story? True yeah, story. she told this. So she oh, was wow. living. She was living life in black and white. Damn, that's her catchphrase. <laughs> um, that's a- so us three are staunch defenders of. of I want to uh, give her a hug now. I, She's like one of my favorite so people just we. in general. And, and now I'm like, fuck! I'm texting her the minute I leave here. Yeah, like, I love you, Dean. <laughs> played her like a fiddle. Damn. See, I didn't know this because like a lot of the because it was hard for me to kind of watch Paradise because I would be like. All this crazy shit's going on, so I would just yeah. see like little bits and pieces, and that that part all came out during her season of The Bachelor. Oh, with, okay, with okay, Nick. okay. That, that okay. wasn't yeah, really yeah. discussed. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. The so, whole eating lipstick and stuff. That's crazy. Holy Ate shit! Lipstick. Because she was so hungry. She's killing it now. In my opinion, she's, she's the next incredible. Bachelorette. Because she, she had a very emotional women tell all on Nick's season. Oh, she did? Season. Yeah. Oh, she, okay. she crushed it. She's crushed incredible. It. Everybody, one of the best everybody's of, trying. One to ever, ever. Yeah, I mean, she's. Graces. I think she's like 100% going to be like the Bachelorette. Yeah, like, I could see that. Yeah, like. Can, Ooh, I, pull, can I pull take. back the curtain? As you know, I like to see the lights, the mics, like how the tears, the, the, tears, the fears, fears, everything's made. Um, can you tell us something about the show that we wouldn't know? Like something crazy that goes on behind the scenes that like a viewer would have no fucking clue that it's going on. Does Chris Harrison ever get pissed off and like punch through the wall? Does Chris, <laughs> Harris, does Chris Harrison have a button in his office to trap people in? Man, you know, you know, one Stuff of the normal people wouldn't know, you know. Oh, let's Is he see, part what... of Pizzagate? No. <laughs> Pizza guy. Okay. We heard they keep you guys separated. Uh, like, here's what's funny is that we're we get like when we go on like on these group dates and whatnot, people think that we interact with like you know Rachel or that we're able to like speak to her. Like, it's like there's no interaction. It, I mean, it's to the point to where the minute we get on camera and it's action, that's what it is. And the minute the scene is cut, whether it's like for like a set change or anything. She's pulled over here, and we're pulled over there. So a perfect, weird. a perfect like, venue to fall in love. You know, it, you know, it's a, you know, it's a <laughs> That's very. What I was thinking it, the fact that people date each other after this. Let is me just show you. Insane. Uh, uh, now let me tell you why. Here's what. So me, I went onto the show 100 percent like player, player. There's no way I'm not going to do this and do that. You just wanted a vacation. You know, <laughs> all you talk about is love. Mm-hmm. All you're around is love. There's. Even the fellas, like it, like the first like couple of hours, you'll be like, oh, you know, how's your fantasy team? How's this? But then pretty soon you're talking about love and being in love. And I could see how people could fall in love because in any other situation, let's say you go out with a girl tonight, you, like you're going to be able to call her, text her, call your buddy, call your mom. You're going to be able to talk about it, tweet oh, right. about it, text about it, whatever. Yep. In this situation, you go out on a date with a girl like, you know, with Rachel. And then all of a sudden you go home and you're like, fuck, I can't contact her. I can't do this. Sometimes you might go on a date on Monday. You might not see her until, you know, until the cocktail party, like, you know, four days from now, three days from now. So it's something to where I can see how people, because you become extremely vulnerable. There's no music. There's no TV. Producers are talking about love. It's like Stockholm syndrome. That's exactly what it is. So let me ask you this. So did you feel that Rachel could be manipulated to manipulate you guys? Like, as you're saying, like you, you're shut off from the outside world. They're treating her in essence, like a movie star. Cause she does a scene and then they shuffle her off. Mm-hmm. You can't talk to her. Right. Correct. Um, did you feel like she would leave certain guys on a note so that they think even the guys that didn't have a fucking chance think they have a glimmer of hope because you see all these guys. And when you watch the show, you're like, guys, like, Iggy, you're like, no fucking way does this guy have a shot. But he believes he does. And how does that happen? Are our producers whispering in his ear? Is she saying something to him that we're not seeing on camera that leads him to believe he has a shot? Like, is that going on? I think a lot of that does. And and like, here's the thing. We're all men. We all have these crazy egos. <laughs> so even if, you know, like, I mean, she could have ended the situation like, yeah, well, you know, I'll see you later. And maybe like the friend Pat. We all know what the friend pad is. Mm-hmm. And then I go back and now I'm like, well, fuck that. Like, you know, I remember that one time in ninth grade when a girl patted me and I didn't 
laying her in my mom's minivan. So yeah, you know, that friend Pat is is this or that. So there, I mean, because even for me, like, you know, just being there and not, you know, having like, you know, my full time, there'll be times where I'll talk like, well, like Maddie, like Munson or something or, you know, and he's like, yeah, man, you know, like, fuck, like, I really felt a connection with her. Like, you know, we had a very romantic dinner. We had a very romantic talk. And at the end of the day, like, even like something like Paradise. He, it, that was before he had his hair plugs, though. He didn't have a chin. <laughs> man, you know what's funny? One of the one of the funniest comments is when that we all went out. That hairline is insane. That <laughs> well, he we, made it that far with that hairline. And it's like, LeBron, it's back. <laughs> <laughs> When we all went out, I posted a picture. Some girl was like, where the hell did Maddie get hair from? And I didn't realize that. I was like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. hell, he's good. Hey, you know, it's that Fit T money it. right there. I hear it's <laughs> painful. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. What's Fit T throw down for, per post? I don't know about Fit T. Like, you know, I do like, see, here's the thing. Like, before I went on, I always said I'm only going to, you know, promote things that I like. What's mm-hmm. Fit T? He's just one, fit T? just a big Instagram pusher. They they get all the influencers and yeah, stuff. Fab Fit Hun, yeah, yeah. or Fab Fit Fun. Yeah, Fab Fit is fun. Uh, like a lot of like protein and like workout ones. Like those are the ones they'll give you like anywhere between like two to five grand per post. And then if you're like a dean or something, you you're probably pushing like anywhere between like the five to nine. It just kind of depends. You get like here's the thing. Whenever I see fans making fun of people who endorse, I'm like, could you imagine just every single month you get like an extra seven grand? It's yeah, a blank. Them. It's a blank check. I like, hate that f- shit. I'm on. Like, the, I'm on the re- the Bachelor Reddit, and it's all these chicks that are really spiteful of the Instagram shilling, as they call it. And I'm like, make your money. Yeah. Get like it. what the fuck? Like yeah. W- like why are you mad at me? Like you know, I always see people who are always upset with Amanda. Because she's like capitalizing. I'm like, yo. He hates Amanda. Yeah, I'm like, yo, <laughs> yeah. she's capitalized. Like, you know, well, she's, listen, I, you know, I she's fucking turned, winning. I, I, turned I, I, think a she's little, I turned a little bit of a corner because it finally clicked. Like, the reason why she leaves her children all the time <laughs> and goes and makes out with random dudes and drinks is because that's what's going to make. Her family she's got to leave the cave. She's got to kill something you know? and bring it back. And, to and her family. daughters are adorable. And now they have their own brand. And like they, ha- I mean, like you know, they're yeah. getting into the YouTube money. Yeah. Still hate Amanda. Uh, yeah. Chelsea. Uh, Kinsey li- really liked Carolyn. Who's Caroline. Kinsey. It's one of Amanda's yeah. kids. She yeah, her she really liked <laughs> Carolyn Lunny. I'm all on the tweets. All right. Can I get back to the questions here? That shout the, out to listeners. Caroline. Yeah. yeah. Shout out Caroline. All right. All right. So there, what we've learned is cast members on this franchise, they group up like you guys all know each other. Um, I guess it was covered that night. You went out with Corinne and you guys had dinner. There was a bunch of fellow cast members out that night. Right? Correct. Correct. Here's a question. Have you hooked up with since the show, any other fellow castmates? I have. Great question, Pat. That's actually a really good question. Great, I have. Uh, great question. I, I can't speak on who, but it was very unexpected. Just say what it rhymes. Please say it's not... D-Lo. I, I, no, I, no, oh, no. Alexis. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It was extremely, extremely. Why can you not say to our humble listenership of he's a 50 gentleman. million people? <laughs> he's a gentleman. <laughs> can you give us a hint, though? It, I can't. Is it she, was, it is was she wild. engaged? Hey. <laughs> Is she engaged? No. Okay. Oh, no. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> he got no, it. but it, you know, like this reminds me, uh, it's kind of like the sorority fraternity. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, we're all, Love we that. all know what, it, like, what a bad edit is like. We all know what it's like to get drug on Twitter for saying this or for, like, saying not that. Not all of us do. Not, you know? <laughs> and, and, like, for I'm me, at like, two grand. you know, I'm the person who, Whenever somebody gets a bad edit, I'm always the first person to call or to reach out because if anybody fucking knows a bad edit, it's me. Mm-hmm. Like even like when Ben's like you know with Ben Z, why the can dog? you not edit? It yeah. doesn't make any sense. What do you mean? Like, oh, do you ta- really not know what the, the edit? We're how, talk- how they portray him? On yeah, the like television. a bad oh, edit. Yeah, yeah so, so Ben know, like, Z loved his dog. Yeah, like with Ben Z, like you know Ben oh even. Oh my you know, God! I thought you were talking about Twitter. You said you had two oh, thousand. <laughs> I was like, what, what are you fuck? talking about? <laughs> let let no. us get it back on track here. Yeah. Ben Z go, go was ahead. boring. Bad at it. So that's yeah. why they did that with his oh, story. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. You know, I mean, they do they do certain things. Uh, like, you know, like Matt, you know, from my season, he was upset because they made him come to, like, the men tell all, and then they made him come to the, uh, you know, to, like, the Paradise special. But then they don't give him any airtime, and they don't let him do anything. And, like, he's like, look, dude, like, fuck this – you know, like they're forcing me to fly out here and only people who fucking matter are like you, Corinne, and people who are going to say wild shit and I'm here and then like 
they'll ask him a question and he'll be like, oh, X, Y, Z. And then they don't put it on TV and then he gets trolled by the trolls because they're like, well, why is he on there and this and that? So Does yeah. he understand how television ratings work? Like you got to well, do something. It's well, kind of yeah. on him. It's yeah. kind of on them. You yeah. know, and it, you know, <laughs> it sucks. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I have another question. Um, and I, I obviously you Shocking. can plead the fifth. Um, is there a bachelor dude? Uh, obviously, we all hate the host, so not him. Anybody associated with the show that is the a huge douchebag that you can't stand that you are willing to say you were on the show with, or someone associated with the show that is a fucking asshole. You know what? I don't have any like. There's not one person who I've like hung out with, and I've hung out with like a lot of cool guys. I've like. One guy who gets a bad rap, and I swear he's like one of the most genuine guys, is Don't fucking see. Robbie. Okay. All like, right. he gets, I mean, he, and the minute I met Robbie on Paradise, we hit it off like bros. I mean, he just, and then through all, all this like process and through all my crazy shit, he would always like, hey, bro, you wanna go grab lunch? Hey, man, I hope all is well. And he was a guy prior to the show. I remember like a few girls were like, oh, when you meet Robbie, he's such an asshole. He's, people like, you know, they, and I'm like, well, what? Like, you know, how is he an asshole? Well, I I heard that. And I'm like, well, fuck, I'm the biggest asshole in the fucking franchise. Like, you know, I'm the guy who came on with the girlfriend. I'm the guy who had the fucking sex again. So yeah. what would you say about me? And they're like, oh, but we know you. I'm like, but do you know this guy? Yeah. You know, his and hair then, is concerning. Did it concern you when you, you know saw when it? he walked down? I was like, this motherfucker is perfect. Like, fuck, I got him and Dean here. I got like, yeah. what the? He's coming out with his eyes and his shits just per. Like, he got he got out of the water and his hair stayed in the same fucking. <laughs> we lost it. Demario, yeah. can I tell you what didn't help him? One word. Yeah. Influencer. Man, that was yeah, that was bad. It, 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 that destroyed him. Was that, that was, was that a production choice? He put that down. He said it. He, oh no, he oh, yeah, said yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, remember he told me. You remember, remember he told Raven. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. God. And then they just like the you girls be, oh, uh, picked yes. that apart as well. Yeah, you know they ate him apart. Like, yeah, oh he, man, he sweat a lot. We thought he was on blow, but it'd be tough to sneak that down there. <laughs> it was, I know blow would have actually was got on it blow. lit. Blow would have actually had it paradise even more. <laughs> well, all right. So uh, tomorrow, if you can't sue anybody, I, one thing I would ask is you be on the next season of Bachelor in Paradise. Have there been talks? Any? Can you reveal anything about future Bachelor? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it actually, you know, wasn't talks for me to, you know, kind of go back. Like throughout this whole time, I always say I had never had the opportunity to like People are always like, man, you're so funny on Instagram. Like, you're so like witty. I've never had the opportunity to like showcase any of this shit. I'm like, I was on two and a half reality TV shows. <laughs> you know, I like, you know, I never really got a chance to even find love, or I never got a chance to go on a, a date. I never got a chance to do any of this kind of stuff. And it's something that I still want to do. You know, I mean, and not for the the sake. I don't care about, you know. Instagram and this and that. I just literally want to see like how this process, because I was a person who went into it like, fuck no, this is never going to work. And I I left Paradise like, fuck, I could see how a Derek and Taylor, by the way, from night one, you knew that was going to happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, I could see how like a, uh, uh, um, like a Carly and Evan, or I could see like how these couples actually do it. And for me, yeah. I'm like, I'm so shitty at dating in real life. Why not fucking try to go on some TV show and why not see if this thing works? Because, I mean... Like for me, for being there, I remember leaving Paradise and I was like in tears in my hotel room. Not a, I mean, not because of a fucking future sex scandal that I was going to be a part of. Yeah. Because I leave, I literally was leaving Paradise. Like I was leaving fucking Paradise. So, you know, unlimited food, booze. You have these beautiful women. You have these exotic dates. Shit that you can't afford in real life. Yeah. You're doing with these next level women, and it's something that I'm like, fuck. I, I, I still want to fucking have an opportunity. To they shop call for this. it FOMO. Yeah. So much, yeah. Like so much. I remember Facetime and everybody, like oh, when they were there, and I'm, I was just like, "Fuck!" I they didn't have their do phones. That. No, I mean, this is when everything broke. This oh. is the night before oh, all this God. broke. I, I, I wish, I wish there could have been a camera in my room because I'm Facetiming like Alexis and Sarah and like all the girls, and we're all just like, none of us know anything. We're like, man, you know, like, well, everybody's flying home tomorrow. We don't know what's gonna happen. And that Sunday, all of a sudden, I get a phone call. And I'm just like, I hang up, I Google my name, and I'm like, I look at my pop, I go, I think I might need your help. <laughs> yeah, like, it's something that I, I never would have thought in a fucking million years that, you know, what I would have experienced. It was crazy. I, I'm going to say something, and I, I don't want it to come off as I'm pandering to a guest. We've had a lot of people on the show in this here studio or via phone. They're always dripping of narcissism, which is fine. We're all narcissists in our way. I have to say from you, you 
don't have any of that with you. Uh, I want to say you're a fucking solid guy. Oh, thank and you, thank I, you. Jesus Christ. You know, uh, no, no. I mean, go I, go yeah. back to bit. I hope I want you on Doctor in Paradise. That was pandering to it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that was. No, you know, you know. I'll often, I'll often have people like you know. You might send me a message, and you might be like. Or even like the fucking meme that I, I was like, yo, bro, correct this shit. Like, this shit's yeah. funny. That's what I thought you were talking about. Edits. That's yeah, all that, that edits. Confused. Oh, okay, yeah. So, like, I'll have people that are like, send me a message, like, hey, man, I hope you have a great day. And I'm like, yeah, man, you too. Oh, my God, you responded. Like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Like, it, like, why? Number one, you're hot as fuck. <laughs> yeah. uh, number two, you live in Texas. I'm going to Texas in two weeks. Like, of course. <laughs> but it's like, why? You know, because I feel like that we live in a world where everybody's so fake and everybody's so full of themselves. To where when you meet like a pretty genuine person, in reality, like I'm no, I'm not like anything different than what we're supposed to be as humans. Like, hey, bro, how's it going? Oh, let me hold this open for you. Oh, thanks. Hey, how's your day? Good. How's yours? But we live in this fucked up world to where people are just assholes and fake. Yeah. To where it's like, oh, man, like, can we like make... America like fucking like nice again, okay. cool again. Oh, thank God. You, you know, like <laughs> you know. Can't say that other thing. <laughs> oh, no, because no, you know it's so much. It's like manna, manna from heaven. You know something. Like yeah, fuck. Has, has the word is the word great going to be diminished going into the into the yeah. future? You think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Son of a bitch. I know. Just ruined it. Um. I was gonna wrap it up. Uh, I before he does, we have to give him the. F- uh, there's three questions, rapid fire. Got uh, it. To answer, or you can just say okay. uh, the fifth. Yeah. When uh, you arrive at the pearly gates, you what wanna, would you like? Uh, sorry, it's James Lipton. Do you want to just go into? I'm gonna it rifle through them. Like... Uh, three questions for you. You can plead the fifth if you have to. Uh, first question: Have you ever hooked up with a celebrity? Yes. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> that's what A. I know. That's what A. I can't say. You can't? I, I, I'll probably get in trouble. I don't know. All right. Fair Jennifer enough. Lopez. Uh, It'll hurt your chances of doing more celebrities. That's for exactly. sure. Exactly. Yep. Uh, Smart. We've learned that uh, when you're a part of this uh, part of this franchise, they kind of travel you around to different cities around the United States. Uh, which city has the most fun girls? And read into that as you will with that question. The most fun girls. You know what? When we did that Miami bachelor auction a few months ago, it was one of the wildest 72 hours of my entire life. What is a... I didn't know. I wasn't what's aware of what is So we did auction? an auction uh, down in Delray Beach with Vinny. And it was uh, me, uh, oh, Vinny. Vinny, Daniel, Josh Murray. Like and, Canadian Daniel? Yeah, and okay. like a few other guys. And it was... Cra- I, I didn't know how lit it was going to be. I mean, it got to the point we get up there and I came out to like Genuine Pony... And then all of a sudden, like my clothes are off, and women yeah. are like, like fighting. What for do you, you mean? All of a sudden, your clothes are off? How'd that happen? It was like paradise all over again. <laughs> yeah. like, it just—I don't know. I just fucked up again. Yeah. And, but no lie, it was like a ninety-eight to two ratio in there, and every single woman was just like on it. And I remember, like, looking at Vinny and being like, "Wow, you got to invite me to this every fucking." What year. a genius! Uh, yeah. event to create because it's a bachelor auction and we raise like i think 15 or twenty thousand dollars for like the humane puppy society yeah that is called charity. a win yeah. win and, that is called it, a win win a straight up win so win. did you have sex with someone that evening yeah actually okay. yeah i mean it was <laughs> it, two in one night damn it that was the third it, question oh, oh, <laughs> oh, damn. we don't even have to have a third question. i was gonna say did you ever have a threesome i think that's a pretty dumb question oh hell yeah <laughs> dude i no <laughs> lie too, no man. lie this is this is something that can be like i mean my best friends can can, uh, can co-sign this my 30th birthday party my number one and number two girl at the time like my lead off and number two hitter yeah i have like two girls right <laughs> So anyway, they ended you have up a lineup at yeah. any given time. Yeah. So my number one <laughs> and number two, they <laughs> they met each like they knew about each other, right? Like they knew, like oh okay, like you know I know her. They met up at my party, and all of a sudden my number one looks at me and she's like, "Hey, me, you, and Tess tonight." And I looked her in the face, and I'm like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" My thirtieth birthday party, I have my number one and my number two. This fucking wild ass orgy. Are they broken women? Yeah. <laughs> no, they're like great. They're one, young, Dylan. One, one's, like a, yeah. one's like a psychologist. Like one, yeah. like I mean, they're both like. Gr- it's just. He's I a remember. sixty-five-year-old man. He's engaged. Hey, Mario, he's, like, he's, he's marrying his high school girlfriend. So <laughs> don't even listen. <laughs> like, hey, no, you know what though? We are are very happy that you uh, survived all of this and and came out relatively unscathed never mind that. did you actually lose your job from that no that was another fake report okay oh. yeah well i'm glad you're still gainfully employed thank yeah. you thank yeah, you gainfully yeah. employed is awesome um, yeah 
Thank you very much for coming in. Do you have anything to plug? Shout it into the mic. No, no, no. I mean, shout out, you know, plug and love. Everybody just love more. Uh, girls, find me on Bumble. Yeah. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Dylan saying goodbye. Nick, say goodbye. Goodbye. Pat, say goodbye. Goodbye.